Welcome back everybody, hope you're all well. I'm going to try something a little different today and try and not offer too much of my own opinion on each clip that we watch. Either way, let's go check out these clips. What the fuck is this? Ain't hey, never seen no yolk the same color as the egg. What the fuck? I didn't see anything there, which I can't explain. Apart from the match in the orange, that's the only thing. But either way, let's crack on. The recent reveal of the ominous Crimson King Charles portrait, there is a butterfly on it. And first off, it is ominous. It is evil looking. If it was a horror movie poster, you would say, yeah, that's appropriate. I think he wanted to present himself as like bloody red, blood soaked conqueror kind of thing. I think that Charles is an extremely weird person. Why he would have this bloody red portrait. But also, he also came out and bragged about how the royal family were descended from Vlad the Impaler, aka Dracula. There was that whole thing where they discovered the remains of dead children in one of the palaces. And I think the royal family just needs to be done away with. Don't forget the blue butterfly too, the blue monarch butterfly. The fact that he said, well, this was for the children. I had them put in the blue butterfly for the future children because the children of the future in his dream world are going to metamorphosize into post-human supermen. Like, what the hell does that mean? I absolutely do believe that this butterfly transformation motif symbolism was used in a lot of these government mind control projects but also weird occultism and so on there is definitely something deeply unsettling about that portrait don't you think i know the argument for the red colors to match the military red colors in the royal attire but i don't know let me know your thoughts about that portrait in the comments below a man named levi set out to explore an old abandoned concrete tunnel located just south of chillicothe ohio in somewhat of a secluded area the tunnel was built in 1927 underneath some railroad tracks and hasn't seen a full restoration since it was built. As such, there are many legends surrounding the tunnel and rumors of it being haunted. One of the popular legends says a woman was walking along the train tracks in the middle of the night and placed her baby on the tracks as a train was approaching. Another version says they were both hit by a train while passing through and now they haunt the tunnel. Even creepier than the legend is that in 1990, a woman was found murdered and wrapped in a waterbed mattress by the nearby bank, and her baby's body was also found nearby. Since then, many people who pass through the tunnel at night report hearing strange noises, as well as seeing the figure of a woman holding her baby. Due to this, the tunnel has been given the nickname Crybaby Tunnel. On one night, Levi heads out to the tunnel alone and captures something terrifying. So I've been down in here in a place called Crybaby's Tunnel. It's a, a place, it's local around my area. 
And they say she got hit on the tracks with her baby or um, her body was dumped right there in the creek, creek down here. There's something dead right there. Bro, there is something dead right there. A dead deer. It's a dead deer. I've been out here forever trying to get stuff, bro. This place is spooky. Is anybody out there? I know you guys heard that. I know you guys heard that. I ain't going down there. If you guys think I'm going down there, you're crazy. Amidst the darkness of the tunnel, Levi hears a baby crying further inside. Terrified that the rumors appear to be true, he dares not to venture any further not knowing what could be making those sounds trying to lure him deeper into the tunnel and instead he just quickly gets out of there i'm sorry but if i heard a baby crying and i suspected that it was on its own i'd be going to see if it's okay and then phoning the police to report that a child's been dumped come on don't run away and just because of the way he reacted leads me to believe that it's all just some weird skit basically he's added the audio in afterwards you know that's what i suspect as far as the deer is concerned railway right above him if the deer got hit it probably fell down into the creek case closed as far as that's concerned let me know what you would do if you heard a child crying and you thought they might be on their own would you run away or would you go and see if they're okay and do the right thing a man was bitten by a 12 foot snake on his testicles after he sat down on the toilet to use the bathroom it was an ordinary Tuesday at Thanet Thangtewanon's home until he went to use the bathroom and encountered the 12 foot beast. The snake had slithered up the U bend of the toilet and hid itself so it wasn't seen by the man when he sat on the toilet. The man suddenly felt a pain on his testicles. His immediate reaction was to reach into the toilet to see what was happening, and that's when his fist closed around the neck of the snake. As he stood up, he noticed blood everywhere, but the snake was still latched on. He grabbed a toilet brush and hit the snake until it loosened its grip and continued to beat it until it died. Immediately after, from the help of a neighbor, he went to the hospital and got a tetanus vaccine. The damage wasn't severe enough that he needed stitches, and his skin would heal in only a couple of weeks. Most people's biggest fear became a reality for him, but luckily, the snake wasn't poisonous. Oh, hell. <laughs> what? <laughs> His first reaction is to reach into the toilet. Come on. <laughs> this man's either got no sense of real pain or there's something else going on there. <laughs> Tell me what your react Tell me what your reaction would be. <laughs> this man was locked in his body for 12 years. If you didn't see my last video, Martin Pistorius was a young man who left school with a sore throat. His illness progressed. His body went into a vegetative state. Doctors sent him home told the parents that he was likely going to pass away, told them that he was brain dead, there's nothing they can do. The issue is he was fully conscious the entire time, hence the name Locked In Syndrome. And it's all detailed in this book, Ghost Boy. For 12 years, he was fully conscious in his body, meaning if someone put him on the bed and he was uncomfortable, he could not move, but he could experience all that uncomfortability. I talked about this extensively in the previous video, but I wanted to dive into some of the questions that have come up. First question was, did the doctors ever figure out what caused this to happen? The answer is no. When he went to the hospital, they thought he had cryptococcal meningitis or tuberculosis of the brain. 
but his body digressed into this vegetative state. They don't believe it was due to the medicines that he was treated with. There were no obvious signs of awareness, there was no signs of intentional movement, which is why they said that he was now a vegetable. Now, why did it take 12 years for a nurse to notice that he was conscious because of his slight eye movement? Well, in locked-in syndrome, they lose control of all voluntary muscles, except for vertical eye movement and blinking. But there is a version called total locked-in syndrome where their eyes are paralyzed as well. In Martin's case, his eyes weren't fully paralyzed, but they were significantly impaired. So it may not be a case of nobody noticed for the full 12 years, but rather there was slight progression in that 12 years. Very, very gradual progression to where he got to the point to make movements that were perceivable to the outside world as a form of understanding and consciousness. Where you can listen to as well as the book that I highlighted at the beginning of the video. Now, how prevalent is locked-in syndrome? Because honestly, this is like my nightmare now. Apparently, it's about one to five cases for every million people. So not super common. It happens in about 1% of all strokes. But my thing is, I have had so many comments on these videos where people talk about they were in a coma for two weeks and fully conscious the entire time. Obviously, people have experienced things like sleep paralysis. Fully conscious can't do anything. So my question is, are these numbers actually legit or do we not know how common it is? Because in Martin Pistorius's cases, right, for 12 years, they thought he was a vegetable. The only reason why we know it's locked in syndrome is because he came out of it, because of a caregiver that noticed via his eye movements that he was still conscious. What if this happens so much more than we can even imagine? I think it, it, it just brings up so many fascinating questions. And I also think it shows, you know, kind of the difference between brain activity and consciousness. I don't know, it's so wild. I feel like this is something that science really needs to catch up on and come up with some kind of standardized test to ensure that someone isn't experiencing locked in syndrome. What a horrendous thing to have to experience though. Let's hope that fella's wrong and that there aren't loads of people which have been wrongly diagnosed as having brain death and aren't actually just experiencing locked in syndrome. The earth is actually flat and this is actually the proof. So take a look at this photo right here. Someone is standing in Alaska taking the photo of what appears to be Russia. Of course, Alaska is in the USA. Russia is nowhere near. And when you look on a world map, obviously they couldn't be further apart. The funny thing about this whole thing is it actually proves the earth is is round, let me explain. So of course the only logical explanation of actually being able to see Russia from Alaska is that the Earth is round and it's connecting from the other side, right? So if the Earth was flat, this wouldn't make any sense. But some people have the theory that the Earth is flat and that everything is kind of connected in a circular motion on this flat Earth, which means this would be possible, so yeah. But then let's take a look at the stars. So depending on where you are on Earth, the stars line up differently, obviously. Especially if you're looking for the North Star, it's gonna line up to different places, right? For instance, if you're standing in the North Pole, the North Star is gonna be above over here towards America and Alaska. It'll be visible from an angle. And also, if the Earth was flat, this is actually the pattern that the stars in the sky would move in, so it wouldn't be like they are now. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Hit that follow button. See you in the next one. I'm gonna make sure to change the feature of video, which is on the other side of this article. Argument. I noticed that a lot of you were not too keen on a particular person's video that I added to the compilations. So I'm going to try and limit how much exposure I give them. Don't worry, I'm not a flat earther. Until it's proven to me that the earth is flat, I'm going to stay a glober or whatever they call it.
We are so lucky here in the UK that we do not get weather anything like that. We've had some flooding in the past, but my goodness, my thoughts go out to those people. Let's hope that they are able to rebuild and repair what's been lost as quick as possible. Let's talk about it. Is Joe Biden's face real? Because one of the craziest conspiracy theories on the internet right now is that he has a body double wearing a face mask to look like him. And a lot of these claims come from things like his earlobes looking different throughout the years. His eye color, his skin folding in strange ways. Him looking taller in some videos. But the question is, does technology that advanced even exist? Well, here's a crazy story that's actually true. Sometime in the early 90s, the CIA's chief of disguise, yes, that's a real job position, met with President H.W. Bush for the first time. And she told him she has something amazing to show him. When he asked what it was, she said that it was a disguise that she was wearing right then and there, only he couldn't spot it. She then literally took her face off, revealing that she'd been wearing a mask the entire time. Now remember, this was over 30 years ago, and since then, things like 3D printing have massively improved face mask technology. In fact, in 2010, a young Asian man used one of these masks to impersonate an old white man whose passport he'd stolen. He got all the way through the Hong Kong airport and even managed to board a flight to Canada. And he was only found out when people on the plane saw him take his mask off, which seems like a pretty dumb thing to do. And one thing to remember is that military technology is often years ahead of civilian technology. It's just kept classified. So, have the CIA used hyper-realistic face masks as disguises? Well, yes. The former CIA's chief of disguise has spoken openly about President Bush trying out some of their masks. But the key detail here was for it to look like someone else, someone random that's not the president. Doing it the other way around is incredibly more risky. Which brings us on to Biden. Does he have one? Well, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And the only real evidence we have points to a far more boring answer, which is Botox, facelifts, hair transplants, and for a lack of a better way to put it, uh, just being an old man with wrinkly skin. And keep in mind, even though disguise technology has improved, so have HD cameras from almost every angle imaginable. And for the ability for that HD footage to go mega viral. But the question is, what do you think? Have presidents ever publicly used this, or is it far too risky? He makes a very valid point there about how many eyes are on these people in very high positions. And yet those masks aren't perfect. When you see them up close, you can tell they're not real. They don't look like real skin. It looks very artificial. So maybe Botox and plastic surgery and hair transplants and everything else are far more likely than it being a mask, right? Although the height thing is a little bit weird, but could be just different shoes. The Zodiac is a guy who killed a bunch of teenagers. As soon as he killed them, he wrote letters to the police and said, oh yeah, I just killed another person. Come get me. Every single one would have encrypted yes. codes. That's why it's called Zodiac. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They couldn't figure out what he was trying to say. Exactly. I don't know if it's true or not, but on his bed, somebody said that he confessed that he went to the movies to see the Zodiac. So he was oh, in the movies shit. watching a movie about himself other people he was just there he was psycho yeah so this guy comes out on tiktok wait 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 he's on tiktok he said that his grandfather was richard hoffman oh yeah okay that is yeah i thought you said richard hoffman was in the video no, 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 no. <laughs> he reveals every family pic that he has you know like when the police does sketches of the kid mm -hmm. matches exactly so bro has receipts and richard was a police in the area where the zodiac a bunch of his victims but this is where it gets crazy because this is how i knew it was real in the letter that his grandfather wrote him he spelled until with two l's mm. and in the zodiac's letters whenever he spelled until he had the same mistake the same mistake maybe case closed fascinating nonetheless i have no idea what the odds are that someone would misspell until in that way we may finally have confirmation for the identity of the zodiac <coughs> As wild as this sounds, I'm literally serious. This right here that you see is a Russian spy that was unalive in Norwegian waters. So his name is like Hadleva Mandar or something like that. It's right there on the screen. And basically he had like this harness that said St. Petersburg. And he was, he's literally like the KGB, like not even kidding. The fact that governments are using literal whales to spy on people brings so much more authenticity to the pigeon theory. So they found the whale, and they looked at the whale, and there were no, like, noticeable signs of any kind of distress or damage or anything like that. So this whale just, like, completely passed away for no reason at all. But the thing is, with no physical wounds, how was this whale unalive then? Think about that. Russia said this whale was no whale at all, but it was actually a symbol of connection. It's a spy. I just think it's literal insanity that we're using animals to be spies now. I'll be watching my surroundings very closely from now on.
What a beautiful creature in that video clip. Seems so harmless. Of course, of course, all wildlife has the potential to be incredibly dangerous, but it looked playful enough in that video clip, didn't it? But that doesn't surprise me. Harnessing animals for psychological, intellectual, or military warfare. Pigeons were used back in World War II. I know that was for carrying messages, but I know out in Iraq and Afghanistan, they used animals as IEDs. Not too much of a stretch of the imagination for a whale or dolphin to be harnessed as a spy. Let's be honest. The fact that this movie is coming out when it is, is very eerie. Reagan comes out August 30th and is chronicling the life of former President Ronald Reagan. But here's what's really interesting about Ronald Reagan's presidency. Ronald Reagan was not actually a career politician at first. He was an actor in Hollywood who decided to take a stand in politics. He also took a stand in an era when there was a geopolitical conflict with Russia. Not only that, but he also campaigned on the morale of decreasing inflation. And get this, because he was so bold in his stance, he actually was our last former president who had an assassination attempt on his life. Do you see what's happening now? In the midst of, in 2024, a global conflict with Russia, inflation as high as it's been in an extremely long time, you have a president on the ballot who wasn't a career politician at first, but was a businessman in New York, and then finally, number four, this former president had an assassination attempt on his life as well. I'm not trying to say it's prophetic, y'all, but what I am saying is, this is extremely interesting. And for me, I'm gonna go check out the movie because here's what I've discovered. Oftentimes, to understand what's happening now and where we're headed in the future, it's important to look backwards. Are you gonna go see the movie? Let me know in the comments. It makes a very valid point. History repeats itself. It's just the technology which advances. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I made it short and snappy with my perspectives on things. Let me know what you prefer. Do you prefer my long-winded, detailed opinions on things? Or would you rather it be quick and snappy? Either way, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like on it and subscribe for future content. I drop a video every single day, 8 p.m. UK time. We also have a Discord server, which if you wish to join, the link is in the description below. It's a place where you can carry on the discussion on any of the topics covered in these videos after the video ends. But for now, stay safe, stay well, stay curious. Until next time.